The Imola Grand Prix weekend saw numerous updates and upgrades amongst the whole grid, and some might have gone unnoticed like the ones Aston Martin brought. And that is exactly their problem. They're bringing upgrades without improving, just like they did last year. So, although they introduced a significant improvement to Imola was Aston Martin, Fernando Alonso had a terrible weekend. And even Stroll looked underwhelming in a car full of upgrades. And now they're even publicly stating things aren't going well. They're underperforming and looking down rather than up. It was undoubtedly Alonso's worst weekend since returning to F1 in 2021 with an accident in FP3 and Q1 elimination, as well as posting the 20th and slowest time while running on full tanks of gasoline. He began from the pit lane following setup alterations, but the 63 lap race essentially devolved into a test session for a squad whose development in early 2023 has somewhat stalled. Alonso's Saturday morning blunder will be the takeaway from the weekend, albeit he still should have qualified for Q2. But should he be concerned by his out of character blunder or the fact that Aston's growth path does not appear to be moving forward at the moment? The chaotic weekend at Imola left Aston Martin with only two points, with team boss Mike Crack saying that its improvements may have rendered its Formula One car difficult to drive. Fernando Alonso tested Aston's substantial Imola modification, which comprised a floor redesign, a front wing and a diffuser in FP1, before Lance Stroll began receiving the parts in FP2. However, on a weekend when other teams also unveiled new parts or fine-tuned those from Miami, Aston's enhancements may have provided absolute performance but not relative competitiveness. Alonso's weekend was ruined by an accident at Rivata in FP3, and after extensive repairs by the Silverstone team, the Spaniard barely made it to the start of qualifying. However, another Q1 off at Tamburello resulted in Alonso being called into the box with more troubles, finishing the session in 18th place. With overtaking impossible, his race turned into a glorified test outside of points contention, as the team chose to make setup adjustments and start from the pit lane. Stroll didn't do much better, qualifying 13th, although he did gain two points for moving up to 9th in the race. According to Crack, Alonso's off-track excursions revealed that the AMR24 is difficult to drive at the moment, despite being somewhat faster following modifications. In Imola, when you start from where we started, it's difficult, Crack said after the race. We come away with two points. I think it was quite a good outcome. It shows that the car is still capable of doing things. But we have also seen that it is difficult to drive. We had a couple of offs over the weekend. The one from yesterday was actually impacting us the most because we were really on the back foot from that point onwards. We wanted to learn more. That's why we elected to start from the pit lane and make a change on the car to see if we can make it easier. We wanted to do better from what we have done, but it was also compromised a little bit by the events of yesterday. After qualifying, Stroll stated that the Imola upgrade package, termed as part of a aggressive campaign by technical director Dan Fallows, was unable to stay up with its immediate competitors. Stroll went out in Q2 and qualified 13th, three tenths behind Daniel Ricciardo's RB in 10th. Fernando Alonso finished 19th as his crew struggled to fix his AMR24 following an accident in FP3. Just not the day or the weekend we were hoping for with the upgrades we brought, not competitive enough, Stroll said. I think everything was working, it's just not good enough so we keep pushing. Other teams are looking competitive and we are not competitive enough at the moment. It feels the same as it felt all year. We brought some upgrades, they might have helped a bit, but we need much more to catch those teams further up the grid. When asked what was missing, he replied, downforce, balance, some behavioral stuff that we have been dealing with all year. We have to keep bringing upgrades, keep putting downforce on the car and making it quicker. That is the name of the game in Formula One. Alonso noted that he was fueled for several laps in Q1. Therefore, his car was overweight when he recorded his fastest lap time at the start of the session. He subsequently had to pit with an undetected condition and was unable to set a quicker time towards the finish of the session. We started with fuel for the whole session, just to give me a little bit of laps and practice. I set the lap time at the very beginning when the car was heavy on fuel, the Spaniard said. And then when the car was light at the end and we put the last set of tires, I had to box for an unknown problem. It was quite painful. I'm sorry for the mechanics because they deserved a little bit better after the job they have done. But yeah, one of those days that everything goes in the wrong place. Aston is in risk of sliding farther behind the top four, while RB has improved since Miami. 
While Crack cautioned against jumping to conclusions after Imola, stating that the situation might change in Monaco and Montreal, he agreed that the AMR24 will require more firepower shortly. We're not happy with two points, that is clear, he stated. But other people are also bringing upgrades, so it is always a relative game. It's tough, we must not underestimate that. I think except one team, everybody has a list full of upgrades so it shows how competitive the whole field is. We have to really keep pushing and bringing more stuff. What are your thoughts on Aston Martin's performances? Are they falling further behind? And will they even be able to catch up again? Or do they have to wait until 2026 to catch up again? And if that isn't enough, the Aston Martin team is always the talk of the town when it comes to a full sale due to underwhelming performances. But recently, once again, Lawrence Stroll, the owner of the Aston Martin F1 team, has confirmed his commitment, putting an end to speculation about a potential sale. But the 2024 performances certainly makes him think about selling again. Stroll's relationship with the team began in 2018, when he acquired the failing business, then called as Force India. Following his purchase in the British car manufacturer, it was renamed Racing Point and then Aston Martin in preparation for the 2021 Formula One season. Under Stroll's leadership, the team has invested considerably in the development of a new campus, wind tunnel and simulator, as well as dramatically expanding the personnel as Aston Martin strives for F1 World Championship success. However, speculations that Stroll was attempting to sell the team persisted throughout the F1 2023 season, with the announcement that he had sold a minority investment to private equity company Arctos Partners, fueling conjecture that he was on his way out. Sky F1's Craig Slater recently said that he could see why team owners like Stroll and one-third Mercedes owner Toto Wolff might want to cash in as the value of F1 teams skyrocketed, but Stroll made it plain that he intends to stay for many years. You don't go spending hundreds of millions of pounds building the greatest new Formula One campus and hiring 400 of the greatest employees if you're about to leave the business," Stroll said recently. It could not be any further from the truth that I have any interest in ever not being the majority shareholder of this team for a very long time, and it is the same with the road car company. I'm not going anywhere, I plan to run these businesses for many years. I'm at the beginning of the journey on both. Aston Martin made a significant improvement in performance at the start of F1 2023, but were unable to maintain it, eventually finishing fifth in the Constructors' Championship. The team will stick to its five-year strategy for F1 title glory, with an agreement in place to move to Honda Power in 2026, when the new regulations take effect, with Honda playing an important part in Red Bull's current march to F1 domination. Ultimately, Stroll doesn't appear to be on the verge of selling, and Aston Martin isn't acting like a company on the cusp of a huge redesign in a new owner's image. That may change over time, but it doesn't have to if the team is on the path that Stroll desires. And while 2023 was disappointing in terms of the team's loss in competitiveness from start to finish, it was also a significant step forward, which has an influence on what is going on off track. It's validated the story we've told, saying we're on the journey to win world championships and be competitive," said Jefferson Slack, managing director at Aston Martin. It's backed the words with reality and action. So it's made it easier to attract partners to the team, for sure. It's still very competitive, but it's made it easier. And with the Honda deal, people that follow Formula One understand the importance of a works team. It's the best engine in the world right now with the best team in the world. So that's another thing. Put all those things together and it's much easier when we're performing well, or at least we look like we're heading in the right direction. And, while new partners may join the voyage, it appears like Stroll will remain at the head of the squad for the foreseeable future. Just where he leads is another thing completely. And at this moment, he isn't leading it to the top, and with rumours coming back around we'll have to wait and see if Stroll will stay for the long term. What are your thoughts? Will Stroll remain the major shareholder of Aston Martin for years to come? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.